happened in C. So it's incredible that, you know, all these ancient civilizations and tech and, and groups that have such wisdom, I, I want to protect them from them from not getting into technology, but they all came together and said one of the best things that they participated was a group Zoom call where they could share their, you know, thoughts, their challenges with other tribes around the world. So I okay. thought that was really cool. And That's I think awesome. if we did our, our purpose on technology, it would be having some gatekeepers and some real, uh, some real data to protect their lands so they aren't pushed out of them and aren't all killed. Because that's the bottom line is we can preserve their knowledge and, and, and re-bring it back. But I, I'm never going to be a Kogi that for the first nine years of his life grew up in the dark that's in tune with the other side of reality so much that they they just have such wisdom right so yeah. yeah so i'm you know if we can find that match of you know the biggest I, i'm i'm like you i do a lot of different things and now i'm trying to see we have a tool through fractally of rewarding these groups or protecting them or documenting them or having something censored proof. So it does come back to that, you know, bigger truth because we can find out, we can be experts in anything, but I'm finding the hardest thing to be an expert on is more of the spiritual enlightened, you know, one with the earth side. And I think, um, yeah, that's what, what's kind of take a look at those websites. Of my, 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 uh, my uh, effort to, to really. So, so what you're saying matches, exactly my half because this will blue otter anderson guy gets me introduced to conscious youth or to andy mack who is a legend in himself in preserving and resharing the traditions of the indigenous peoples in fact the latest news that i received through andy was that rolling thunder claims that the jews are not the lost or the, that see there's see i don't know if you know this whole backstory in history but there's a large body of evidence of people claiming that the Cherokees are one of the lost tribes of Israel. In fact, it is not a mythic thing. It is supported by DNA, historical, anthropological, cultural evidence to the degree that the nation of Israel has given land to the Eastern band of the Cherokees in acknowledgement of their ancient relations and ties. There have been many Cherokees throughout history that also claims to be of Hebrew or Jewish descent. Okay, you have the Mormons that have been saying this thing the whole time along. And then you have Sean Little Bear of the Cheyenne tribe, who's considered the wisdom keeper of that tribe, basically stating that th they have in possession artifacts, metal plates and inscriptions that are of ancient possession of their tribe in Hebrew, Egyptian, and I forget what other language, and that they don't wanna release them to the public because every time they do that, the Smithsonian just makes them go into a, a, a disappearing hole, you know? And so right. like, there's a lot of claims that are being put out there that need to be sort of verified, you know, and investigated and if truthful need to be preserved. And so the thing is, is that this guy, Will Blue Otter Anderson introduced me to a guy named Andy Mack. Andy Mack is focused right now is on conscious youth global movement. I don't know if you can see my screen or it's in the chat link. Yeah, okay, check out, uh, read a little up on these guys and then check out the, the video at the bottom with the kids. This is what kind of stuff he's up to. What you were just talking about is exactly what I want to do through with Andy and conscious youth global movement. And then the We Have One Foundation, this is Samara's foundation of which now I'm becoming a board member. And they have direct ties to people in the entertainment industry that are trying to help save people, celebrities and very well-known wealthy people from what they see as a very demonic system and wanting to lead them into a better way of doing things and getting their endorsement and support. And so it's, it, it even got into this weird thing to where it's like where this person is coming from totally matches my understanding of where the world situation is at. But now I'm being put into a situation where I can't even disclose what was talked about because of protecting the, you know, right of the, of the person requesting it. And, and, and yeah, but yeah. the long, long story short is we have access to like courting in pretty mainstream type people. If we had a business plan, 
And I've already talked to Andy about like endorsement kind of things and whatnot. And so this is all, this is all like, this has been waiting for you to explore. You get what I'm saying? Like Samara's, yeah. Samara, I, I knew Samara and Andy well before I came into EOS. In fact, the only reason I got into EOS is because one of the other people I met through Andy, I met two other people that have note, Eric Whitcomb, who is my coding buddy, who's a shamanic programmer, who's badass, who can teach me pretty much anything in any language and teaches me about data structures and big, big O notation and just this conceptual kinds of things. And then, uh, then um, the other guy is a guy named uh, Dwayne Ryans, who, is, who started his own token on UTU1 called Nashira Coin, which I helped him. <laughs> I laughed at because he just didn't have any web representation except on this app. And so I got him to build this website. Uh, he did it all himself on uh, GoDaddy. And basically, it's through him that he kept going, we need more developers in the US. He kept talking about EOS. I'm like, what the fuck is EOS? You know, I didn't even know anything about blockchain. This is the beginning of this year. So since I got into blockchain and Dan Larimer and more equal animals and stuff, I've just been like a nonstop EOS information consuming machine. You know, and so the, well, now I'm talking to you. What comes up uh, first is the empowerment of young people, kids, right? To teach right, them right. these skills. Yep. To use the gamification marketing and the people we know to make it a success. Yep. And then to ride the wave of this play to earn or play to something where we match we yeah we use all this content to create a learning platform which some would call a game which someone would call a play to earn to then real world events right we kind of match up um the education reward these people through a fractally like like let me let me specify a fractally like thing like if we have a new well let me back up if we had a bunch of women go through this process they would not do the same process that we're doing in fractally right it would right. be something more sharing the whole rating doesn't work for them but we have the power to change that in, in any kind of new fractal so how do we i i really believe that getting people through this consensus rewarding them even if there's not much value there first is the way to really empower the world so i'm loving the fractal governance I like the ancient knowledge and, and getting kids to talk about it and then riding this wave of entertainment NFTs that have value, that have real value, that it's like, I'm not buying a virtual land. I'm protecting some natives land. Yeah, I'm no, I, I'm right there I'm with putting, you. I'm putting their stuff on a orbit thing that can never be taken down from the establishment. Like we're all having a hard time. Well, we have to start at the root of power that's being taken away that can really send us all into a different vibration. So, so yeah, it's time to kind of use our times and, and, and yeah, our knowledge so really uh, in a smart way. So here's my thoughts on that. Cause everything that you're saying is the same conclusion that I came to. And I realized that most of the ideas that we're talking about, I already sort of entertained ha having a blockchain tokenized solution, but really it just involves the gamification of education to yes. where give education away for free and they can jump through the hoops by learning something and then doing tasks. And those tasks are value tasks that need to be accomplished, rewarding them something. And now I could do that all without tokenization, just with WordPress plugins like right. membership and bonus points and like have a model. And I'm ready to do that because if people don't want to do it my way, well, I feel as though there's a value for Doug to do it his way and you to do it your way and everybody to do it their way. And I want to support all of that, but I have to have a limited focus on where I put my energy and people who like want to, want to join my party, you know, whatever. And so as much as possible, I'm very interested in leveraging and integrating these cutting edge technologies, because that just bolsters me and what I'm doing, you know, but at the same time, I don't want to be put in a position where I can't be honest. And I'm yeah. so vested into something. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to be a naysayer or whatever. And, I, and so there's a sort of kind of thing here that's going on 
to where as much as a proponent I am for EOS Fractal, I will be probably the most critical or like, like just like, maybe I won't show it, but in the background, I'll be still investigating it and thinking about it and wondering, you know, but the long story short here is, man, um, from the very beginning, I remember when I, when you brought up that thing called gratitude uh, with the giraffes and, and just sort of like your, your, your desire to, to reach more of the masses of people. I was like, we need more of that. Cause right now uh, it's too, it's like, we're not ready to really invite people. We're trying to prototype and design the thing we would invite people to. But the problem is we want to allow that process to be influenced. But the reality is, is that there's no way they can accommodate all the various kinds of cultural differences and acceptabilities. It's very much a geeky thing, you know? And so for me, I'm like, you know what? After Samara's initial experience with it, just as how she felt as a woman, and seeing some fundamental, you know, design flaws that maybe weren't going to be deviated from, uh, she no longer felt interested in participating in it. But when the Fractally in Orbit thing picked up, see, Samira had a on, long-going, on-standing partnership with DSILive.net, which had probably a decade ago launched the first satellite live streaming anywhere in the world, you know, kind of okay. system. Yeah. And they were doing events. Well, the business partner dies. The business for, for the last five years has floundered and gone into you know hibernation. But now the, the guy wants to get it going again. And when the Fractal in Orbit thing started talking, they're start talking about Elon Musk and Starlink. I was talking to Samara at the same time, where, which had this parallel dialogue going on with satellites. And I realized that the energy and the interest of the people in the Fractal in Orbit team is sort of like not as much. They're not like fractally... Uh, or EOS maximalists, like you got a film producer in there, you got Stan Larimer and the, you know, whatever. And then you have Toby, who's more like a business planner. And, and so they're sort of like got a cold, totally different energy and vibe that I think is much more of a similar uh, values of what you're, you and I are sort of talking about, because really, ultimately, I, I think I have persuaded them away from you know, like this notion of we're just going to run this thing like a, a private business to where, hey, we need to collaborate. We need to open this up. You know, we need to get all these different stakeholders. And so here's another tidbit. I, I graduated from Cal Berkeley in 2001 in a degree of peace and conflict studies was my major. My area of focus was conflict resolution. I studied and trained as a mediator. So the kind of mediation I was uh, interested in is what's called transformative mediation. It's not mediation. When people think of mediation, they usually think of court mandated mediation, which is more like arbitration, which is not mediation in my mind. <clears throat> what mediation is to me is when the parties are able to identify themselves in the process, if they have a stake in a problem, and to uh, share what their perspective is in a safe environment that allows for that conversation to happen and the positions can be separated from interests. Positions generally being what's outwardly stated, interests being what's motivating and really important right. you know, to the yeah. person. And so I learned my primary professor I just got in touch with, his name is Ron Kelly. Back in the 80s, Ron Kelly mediated the process that created the legislation for alternative dispute resolution in the state of California. No way. That, that model was copied after by most of the states of the United States. Yeah, okay, yeah. This is back of the day. So this guy's a big deal, right? So I told him, hey, Ron Kelly, this is what I'm up to and I need your help um, or you know, your advice because this is what I want to do. Because right now his focus is real estate and construction. Interesting, because I've already been pushing the real estate NFT on the Web3 spaces on Twitter outside of EOS and getting dialogue over there. So anyways, what I said to him is like, I want to know what your thoughts are on how do I go about mediating an international process that leads to a dialogue that results in legislation that will be adopted across the entire planet governing the use of the blockchain. Because I'm listening to what Brock Pierce is saying in the Helios things. He's saying, hey, our leaders are uneducated. They don't understand it. They, they need to be taught. I'm like, who's the best people in the industry to teach them? I say it's the EOS maximalists 
and fractally nastiness who are in argument with each other over the best ways, but have a lot of the raw basic fundamental information that if repackaged could be like, hey, you know, it's sort of like we, we as the EOS community are looking for the best way. We think we're on this best path, but we're open to work with everybody. You know what I'm saying? And not compete as much as, you know, let everything compete freely and fairly and, you know, and let the, let the best technology win, you know, yeah. without obfuscation and bad actors and, you know, arbitrage bots and DDoS attacks and civil threats and all this stuff, you know? Anyways, that's yeah. sort of where I'm at. <laughs> I'm crazy, huh? Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. But <laughs> see, I want to gamify my life. I want to gamify you know what I'm saying? Like turn this, that's what this Witzwalker Wu thing is all about. It's a multidimensional expression that is a trademark name that is yet revealing itself to me what it fully really is, but I've already claimed the use of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an AI program where creator, creation, and AI are converging as one. Because I think really what's happening is we live in a holographic construct based on language. And so we're, we're sort of desi we're designing and interacting with a quantum reality that's multidimensional and adapts to yeah. our language and thinking. It's po quite possible. This has to be explored, Dwayne. Quite <laughs> no, I agree. And it's, it's, um, it's interesting to see what's closest to a person's heart, what you really want to do. And, and you're talking about influencers. It's interesting that I have a lot of people in the psychedelic community that really have, you know, good contacts that are really proud that they're changing that, you know, you're saying educate, you know, yes, educate influencers in government. And I would say before that, let's get them, let's get them past the trauma that we all have. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and no, let's get right. them into you know, I guess if we could change the world, what would be the easiest way is you just like dose everybody some mushrooms, right? Well, I, I... well you, see, you, nailed, <laughs> you nailed it though. You nailed it. You cannot solve this problem as if you think it's a technological problem only and, you need, and you're only going to come up with a technological solution. If you miss the human factor, the human variable and what's going on or how that plays into it, that's a huge, stupid mistake. And see, what's happening is I'm saying, whoa, Dwayne's right. I'm right. We need to widen the scope of how for, for this to be successful over here, we have to look at this elephant over here. And the technology starts at we need people need a safe space and they need the time to be even open to open up their space. And a lot of that is monetarily, you know, it is getting over the fear of, I don't have room to even listen because I have to get through this month, right? right. And, and $300 a month gets more than two thirds of the world's population past that fear of being able to get on to the next thing. So I understand that, you know, they're, they're kind of part and parcel. We are in this matrix of fear and it's coming down harder than ever. They're telling us we're going to have less and less. And anytime you tune in or I listen to people that are in that fear space, it's like, it's going to get worse, blah, 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 and supply chains and all this stuff. So we realize we need a new system. I'm privately really happy the system's breaking because it needs to. We can't build on top of a broken foundation, but we can already, you know, how do we leverage those two things? Gaining the right consciousness and having the space to like, get out of the matrix and then still paying the rent. And I think we can do two to two together, right. Of bringing people along that path. And it does come to that longstanding rooted, you know, knowledge of like, I can only give so much, uh, at the total, you know, how I see and embody the matrix, how I'm into this nature, how nature speaks to me, how it's a spiritual plane. Um, these ancestors are what we're, you know, learning from and, I guess even farther down, you know, learning, just being able, like I'm, I've, I'll turn on my camera. I'm really blessed that I've put myself in a space um, where you know, I have nature all around me. Right. So, and that's a really, you know, that's my kind of psychedelics on a, on a daily basis. So uh, let me just turn this on. That's awesome. Hablo español un poquito, pero no practico mucho. No hay muchas personas que hablan. 
<laughs> my my Spanish, that's my next goal. My I, I speak tough, Spanish. Dude. I speak Spanish better than any other language besides English. Oh, good. But I, awesome. I, I grew up in California, so it's like, you know, this the language to learn. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, some kind of right in right in the rainforest. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. It's nice. What kind of well, wildlife cool, do you have there? Uh, we've got the little monkeys, the tons. Like it's it's a wildlife craziness. Can, Every you, can you interact you can with them? Will they like can you interact with the monkeys or will they are they, they wild do. or domesticated? Um, we, there's so many banana trees that we kind of hang them on other trees so they come close. I'm still, you still can't like, you, you have to keep your distance, you know what I mean? And they want to keep their distance, but it'll be as close as this banana tree right here. Um, so, and there's kawadis, there's all these kind of, um, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot. I had a That's huge awesome. spiritual experience because there's a black jaguar that poked out the other day wow and it was the back of my head because i asked him like is that a is that how will i know if that's a cat and then i started walking like a cat i'm like its tail was the same diameter it was like a jaguar i'm like oh wow and all of a sudden it was like being on acid or something the back of my head just expanded and the cat basically came in the back of my head and kind of like almost had eyes in the back of my head i'm like holy crap i just like communed with like anyways yeah so it, it's it's, wow. it's a trip. I, i've gone and tried to do psychedelics by the river down here and just done some deep breaths and realized i don't have to take anything everything turns fractally and and like light and you're like how is Dude, this uh, fucking me, possible i want to get you me and shot Cruz together one of these days because anyways oh my gosh i don't even want to say well i'll tell you this much I'm very, I'm very not ashamed of the fact that he made it a point to mention in his initial uh, EOS Translation Foundation team interview with Mark that I I watch every single one of the videos from beginning to end. Like I review them myself. I look at the language translation mistakes, and I don't necessarily always take notes, but I just pay, pay attention if I see it. He had to adamantly mention about how, when he was in Denver how he uh, got introduced to both marijuana and psychedelics. And he's like, I was like, he used to, this one video he showed me his bag of Amarita Muscaria or whatever. And I'm just all like, dude, I love you. I love you. And it's like, because, you know, this whole thing with. Uh, Shit, you know, I Asian, wonder if that was, I wonder which, I have to watch that video. Because oh my gosh. Do my you have, team, you have my missed team out on so Crown, much. My uh -huh. team at Crown was always the group that brought the, the mushrooms to the party. Right. And that Denver big meetup was crazy the amount of people that we introduced in a big club and it was wasn't the right like i like being in nature it wasn't in the right environment but yeah we we changed we changed some lives <laughs> and then the san francisco one was just even more off the hook so like yeah we well, usually bring the where was it out in san francisco i used, i grew up san in san francisco Bay. was the eos it was a few years ago now it was eos oh shit because I, I grew up in pleasant hill which is about mm, 40 minutes east of San Francisco. Okay. So when I lived in Alaska and I tell people where I'm from, they would never hear Pleasant Hill. I go, it's the SF Bay Area. San Francisco. Bay. Oh, you're from San Francisco. So you must be gay. And blah, blah. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though. But yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that I think um, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to figure out, like in the context of the EOS Translation Foundation, like I said. You know, if you draw a limit or a boundary of what the scope of that team is, it's one thing. There's a lot of other stuff going on because um, basically I've used it to allow myself to be off topic because <laughs> normally when I'm off topic, people don't want me to be off topic. It's bothersome and I don't really get much feedback or input, you know, maybe as much as like an emoji, but like having Mark, a lot of our team meetings has been him sort of corralling my wonderings about my observations and activities into a assessment of does it provide value and how does it and you know and and at least he's witnessing it and because you know it's like the last meeting I went to I got a one okay I got a one and so at the same time the Wednesday the last meeting before that I missed 
because I was so busy trying to finish my list of contributions that got carried away and missed the meeting because I was expecting oh, another shoot. <laughs> As this is the same meeting, the same week earlier was a four year anniversary of EOSIO. Yeah, and I yeah. had a I had a 24 hour fucking live stream. I saw that. Okay. I and I, re- I saw it after. And the I, but what ended up burning out my recycled computer that I got for free. And so I had to buy a new computer that. So uh, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but so, so it ends up what happening is like of the people who did come, it really was like a party. It really was like a so because everybody was like Samara came, Patrick came, Douglas Butner came. Dude, Douglas Butner came more than once. I closed it the end of midnight with Douglas Butner. He kept me going till the very end. <laughs> and it was funny because of all the people who came, we had a great time. And we had a lot of dialogue and guess what? That had nothing to do with anything we normally talk about. What did it have right. to do with? Who we were, our, our vision, our spiritual desires and longings, just what, what the positive things we see. It was a whole different energy. And it was sort of funny because it was almost like a pretty certain way. The same number of viewers that I had were also co-hosts or speakers. So like they, Cause it's like everyone who joined took the opportunity to speak. You know, there are very few people who just listen. But the funny thing was, was it gave me a tremendous amount of learning from how to use StreamYard when you're streaming to Facebook, to Twitter and YouTube at the same time. And what kind of copyright limitations you can get away with by restreaming other people's content, knowing that I should really be contacting a lot of people, but also knowing EOS people are like, viewing like anything you can do to promote them they're whores they don't care if you're sharing or restoring it you know right. as long yeah. as you're not making them look bad and so in a sense i'm setting precedent as having a right to publicity and doing it under fair use is really what i'm trying to do ah, perfect. Right? and so and so so basically it's like the narrative that i create is like eh, you know because the guy who gave me the idea is like it was awesome everyone and it's funny because like, you know, so many people have said, if I was in the breakout room, I'd vote six for you, you know, yet the people, other people that are like, who is, you know, whatever. it's like, I, it's just funny to me because what's the real value being created? What's the real impact? You know, I think the metrics that are being used are very, very crude, very poor. And I think there's a lot more elaborate and sophisticated ways of devising metrics, but guess what? They're very resource intensive to design and to implement. But as far as well, modeling, I think the like Douglas and stuff, there's going to hopefully be enough room where we can just iterate and build those tools off of off of this type of you know system. And yeah. you know, I, I participated in a lot of Dan's systems. I just see, I guess I've just dealt with so much wrong blockchain voting, you know what I mean? And and participation. So just looking at the tools available right now, um, you know, the talking stick method, passing on the energy. um, Yeah, there's, yeah, it's, I guess for voting in this tokenized environment, I think it's one of the better ones. But like Douglas says, there's way more, tools and better things that we can be doing and then we know it is this very centered techie group and it's not it doesn't have the right vibe for a women just even the whole oh, yeah. rank, the whole ranking thing i right? agree so, i agree so i'm sure that we can just leverage this technology just like we leverage all the other ones i agree and don't have to build it by building something a little bit different for these other user groups right, right. um it's yeah. almost what's happening with uh, eden fractal Yes. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, honestly, I actually wouldn't want to talk to you about this. The hackathon is not a hackathon. Did you hear about this? No, I've done a lot of really cool hackathons where it was equitable. It's called a DACathon. Um, you know what? You're smoking. I'm going to go cheat and have a smoke. Just let me grab right. my coffee and a cigarette. I'll be right back here. All right. I'm going to go get a drink too while you. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll be back in two.
Ah. Why? Oh, cool. Finally. Hey, Dwayne, uh, what do you know about SEO and like the GDPR privacy? Do you know much about that realm of information? Um, uh, just a little bit as far as, you know, how some, uh, you know, that one EOS different chain had to change Europe chain, really address that uh, to be, you know, blockchain isn't really, doesn't fit that standard. So I know if you look up world chain with EOS iteration, um, they address that, that issue of being able to delete, delete people's information. Um, I haven't had to implement too much and I'm not really, I could use help. I'm not, you know, I'm not a web developer or designer. So, no. so let me show you something. Okay. Yeah. These are my hosting packages. Okay. These are ice cast radio stations, 24 hours a day they run and Right now, if you go to EOS, I got it running on one of one of my sites. If you search for it, let's see if it's where it is. Okay, here it is. It's a third in Google now. That's changed. But anyways, at the very bottom of the screen, I don't know if it's still working. And I, dude, everything I'm doing is so hodgepodge and like ghetto because like this plugin that I found doesn't do all the EOS IO chains. And I want to get the developer to help me add them. You know, I'm like, okay, add the list. This is me taking an AI software and narrating all the worlds of stage by William Shakespeare with an AI voice. And then I embed somebody else's crap. And then see this EOS nonstop radio. Okay, that is this IceCast station I pay $4 a month for. I have another one. I was gonna do one for my own business line, but I was actually thinking of doing like a Chinese or Korean version, you know? Uh, but anyways, uh, these are my different hosting packages. I only have three active right now. I only need two. I'm migrating from off of one to another. Let me just real quickly just show you some of the domain names but and how this works. But basically, these are the domains I have attached to this Chess Homes. Okay, Chess stands for Comprehensive Holistic Economic Sustainable Solutions dot homes because it's a website nice. all around organizing around having a home owning your home, respecting and living in harmony with the land and the people around you in a way that's comprehensive, holistic, and provides economic sustainable solutions. That's what chess is all about. And then Perfect. under that, that domain, I have the American Indian Unity Movement, which is a real thing that's dead that I wanna bring back to life. I saved this website PDF off of archive.org with the permission of Will Blue Otter Anderson from the head of the, uh, Whatever. And it's like, dude, I need so much help. These are all projects for students that I could train them. I could do affiliate programs and start monetizing, showing them how to make money, just web two, you know, billiard history. I have a longstanding history in the billiards and media industry, as well as a player that I don't even want to get into, which is a huge opportunity. There's a sponsor called Alpha Coin, which I think is a shit coin that has come into one of the end of the scene that I'm concerned about. Free America, that art is a website that I want to create for a portal for artists across America 
that want to, there's a model of what I call free pensation, a form of exchange and compensation that's based on free, freely giving. But you don't want to just keep giving freely if you don't get something back, right? And so there's a, that's where the compens, the pensation part comes in. That is a whole thing in itself that needs to be explored. Indigenoushistories.xyz, a portal site for all, all the world. And it's XYZ because it's at the end of a story, <laughs> the conclusion, right? Uh, it's DNA, Intertribal Sports Development Network Association. And this is a, a, a way to organize the tribal natives across tribal jurisdictions into a unified sports competition framework that was the brainchild of someone in the pool industry that I haven't need to get back to and talk to. This pool investors is a pun because I'm going to initially target people in the pool industry because of my pool relations, but it's just all about pooled investments. So, you know, crowdsourcing funds, real estate uh, uh, investment trusts, uh, it's not working because I have to fix it because I'm in the middle of transferring sites. The city of first is as a site, a regional site based on the town of Tahlequah that I live in, which is the capital of the Cherokee Nation. So those are all pet projects of mine that aren't getting attention because I'm too busy with EOS. Right, then, right. And then I got this. Uh, this is what I, it's based on this original domain called the Great White Throne. And that actually has to do with the biblical interpretation um, of gathering people all into one place to have all their claims and qualms about life and everything to God and to each other brought together and assembled before the great white throne in preparation for the return of the Christ consciousness. But that's a narrative that's going to be interwoven into this with Walker Wu. Uh, is, but it's, you know, the, the reality is, is that what I want to do eventually is open up with Walker Wu. Anyone is with Walker Wu. You know, everyone can tell their story and they have a new name essentially, you know, but anyways, right. uh, going back to the domains here, sorry, I missed uh, add on domains. Okay. So this is what I'm all running on one $5 hosting package. Okay. I'm running every single one of these domains. Okay. As so EOS forums, this is based on web two, one of the best ones I've found. EOS index, this one I've just been working on the last couple of weeks, okay? And the reason I've been working on them is because there's so much timely news, I'm trying to broadcast it when it happens and not wait till later. So it's like a real, like I have, I have pages that don't, like I had uh, filler text in Latin still and you know, just crap. So now like Jesse, if EOS bees is giving me this, this is a web linkable map. Okay, look, I put these here because I didn't know what to do because I was just like, man, there's not enough EOS. I just wanted to have something there. Then you see this, my stream is not working, but it sends to a link in which you can listen to it, which I'm not really happy with, but you know, it's, it is what it is. So I get uh, more time. And then I just started putting in links, putting in links because I want to make this index and I'm trying to create a structure, you know, working groups, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm also running the EOS open stage site, which I showed you just a little bit ago off of this. So I'll do this all for five bucks. Uh, EOS love, look That's at this awesome. one. Look at this one. It, it takes me like 30 seconds, it takes me like 30 seconds to a minute to spin up one of these instances. Okay, see now this is a problem <laughs> because uh, I'm, I've done some transitions and I have to troubleshoot. But anyways, look at this. Discover EOS love, the soul's, my game developer guy was telling me I should throw the Zoom avatar or the open source avatar of Python layer in between and market this to Koreans and they would go, I could sell it like hotcakes, you know? And so I was like, okay, that's an idea. Um, yeah, so now this one is my Drupal. I wanna go Drupal. And it's cause I found a new dev friend on Facebook who was encouraging me to go Drupal. So I said, hey, let's make a transition path from WordPress to Drupal, you know, to where, cause like right now I can still do work, like, uh, Patrick of Mindwitch willing to show me how to do anchor wall integration with user authentication in WordPress. I just don't have the time to, to follow him up on his offer. You know, right. it's like, I yeah. want to do trainings on this dude. Dude, I'm like a one man fucking dev education team. Of, you know, like if I get people and ideas and interests alive, this one is, I realize what an industry it is monetizing death, the industry of death. So I call it fast forward funerals. Like don't wait for the time where your loved one dies on you, think ahead, plan ahead, prepare for it. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Control it and don't let the state take over <laughs> fractally in orbit. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, this is my, um, this is, okay, so this site, this site, and this site are like the three primary sites. This is fiction. This is like science. And what's Walker world is where fiction and reality meet. And it's just whatever is flowing through the consciousness of Doug Wu, essentially. Wu cloud, I'm trying to set up a next cloud instance there, if you know what that is. And then this one, I just wanted to buy because uh, I had this WW, it's like the three W's is like, you know, World Wide Web, but it's also Witz Walker. Witz Walker, in fact, this whole nation, notion of Witz Walker Wu is a language that is structured based on my synthesis of understanding all the great religious traditions, mythology, sacred geometry, and trying to create a multiversal language that is mathematically based. Woo. Yeah. yeah. And that woo you just said is yeah. exactly right. Cause that's exactly what's happening is the woo W O O the capital W capital O and the lowercase O represents the creator wooing mankind. The wits is humanity. It's the creation. Like you could think right. of it in so many different ways, subject, verb, object, wits, Walker, woo, who is doing what wits is doing what he's walking and where, where, where is, where is he? How is he walking? What is he walking towards? What's his destination? Woo. And, and so you can think of past, present, future, uh, space, time, mind. I have all these iterations of threes, you know? And so there's this whole language that I'm developing that I want to basically enfold all the other traditions in a way to where they can, they can express themselves without harm, you know? And because so much of the time when we speak, uh, there's this projection of energies that are not necessarily representative of the, the, the language because we're projecting from our bias. So there's got to be a way to, to break it all down. We have to de basically destroy and deconstruct all of the thinking into minutia to rebuild it back up into an understanding. And yeah. so that is the rider on the white horse. That is Kalki. It's like the, the, the Kalki who comes in at the Satya Yuga of the Vedic traditions is the, the right writing the white horse is the same writer on the white horse as the Bible, but they're just seeing it from a different perspective of space time mind, different iteration, yeah. reflection. So I have this whole wacky language that I'm trying to develop, which Samara and Andy and possibly you could help co create, you know, and like influence and participate in. And yeah. so, um, because ultimately, what I realize is that whatever happens, the solution always comes from the group, ultimately. But yeah. you don't let the group lead the group. Democracy sucks when you have a lot of stupid people leading the group. When a lot of people have been pushed into a corner to act in very primitive ways because other intelligent people have made them that way, leading yeah. the group, you know what I'm saying? And so it's sort of like, a, malevol or a benevolent dictator needs to come along the hero the anti-hero that's it you know you know and, and and we don't tell the story in truth we sell it through fiction because once we can bring the people into fiction then all the rules are can be broken and then we can explore explore different timelines and options yeah. and 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 re redo it you know a different way and, and all this stuff and so it's sort of like man it's like what i'm trying to do is not there's one aspect of it is is not my own innovation it's basically what i'm witnessing already happening and something forming itself bootstrapping as what is the best solution to this and i think the best solution has actually been already foretold in ancient scriptures and yep. you know in ancient traditions and that each every tribe and nation and tongue needs to come together to speak in one chorus and symphony of voices you know, and so that I don't know how to describe that, but well, and, then, and then it's it's poetic that it seems a big task, like, you know, how do all these people do that? But the power of small groups is, is how it's done. And I've taken a lot of sustainable development courses and, and different different things. And one of them was uh, co-housing. It was, you know, the Northern Europeans have figured out how a group that wants to live together, not in the same house, but in the same community, they came up with a magic number of 30 doors. So 30 families. 
And that was more to have not too many chiefs in the kitchen and have enough money to, to function as a community. But all I'm trying to impress is that it's these small groups of 30 people that can have share information about with groups that can have a proper management, you know, be in a safe space and, 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 See, and further humanity. That. Right. So yeah, I'm all so about yeah, getting... it's not about us having a master group and everyone just understands. And there's one leader. It's like, it's these smaller groups that right. you know, can then, then work together for sure. Right. I'm all about that too. Like doing things in a real way at a local real level in a smaller you know, focus kind of thing. And how does that all fit with the big picture? So here's something I want to just point out to you. This is called uh, open web analytics. The reason I started using this is I've been out of the loop from doing uh, web publishing and live streaming, but I started live streaming before YouTube even allowed you to, I was doing Ustream. Back in the day, I could get to Google number one within half a second's time. Like I would already have the search word phrases and it wasn't like highly competitive, you know, keyword market I was going after, but I would hit, I would hit publish on my article. I'd go to the next browser, hit search and it all be at, be at number one. Like I had Google that trained. And so like, I haven't been really in the game and I know Google's gone to hell. Honestly, I've seen it, but what I found out more recently is that uh, Google analytics, which is the primary way that a lot of people use to track and monetize and understand the traffic on their website is basically uh, now being declared illegal in, uh, in, um, the, by the European Union. And so technically, whenever you're in violation of the GDPR, if you don't have your privacy statements and you don't have all your GDPR compliance, right. you know what happens? You can't be viewed by Europeans, cannot uh. view American websites. They can't even see the news. They're IP blocked. Well, okay? that's, that's interesting too. It's a little bit different, but I've traveled around a lot and I was just flabbergasted when I went over to Europe and different countries, I was trying to tell them what was happening in Canada. And they're like, we're journalists. We've never heard of this. And I was trying to get onto the sites that, you know, I'd usually get onto totally banned. So it's, it's, it's even so, before this GDPR and, and we see, all just exactly. take it for granted that everyone has the same see, access to information that we do. And it's, it's see, not what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is I have a very clear view of the overarching landscape of what's going on in the web. Yeah, and yeah. I'm laughing at how stupid some of the EOS marketing people are in my mind, you know, or just like how about like by wire, he's telling me to go to plausible. So I was like, okay, I tried out plausible, but then I'm like, why am I going to pay $9 a month for this? And what is it actually giving me? Cause I bet you there's an open source repository to use that outperforms this. And I found it because right. of that, which is called open web analytics. So I found out I can install this on my same hosting account. They're running all the same other websites. It runs an API node that tracks all of my sites now. And it gives me like ability to do heat maps and like, like this, this kind of stuff. You can track where the mouse moves, you know, where all these little minutiae of movement. But it's like, oh, wow. I don't want to get into a privacy violation to myself. But what I'm saying, this is free. It's easy to set up. I can show people how to do this. And now look at what I'm doing with my own site. EOS open stage, how many page views? How many repeat visitors? Five. How many new visitors? 95%. You know, how many come from social? Like, why is it this kind of information being publicked and tracked by a, like a collaborative team? Like, do we have targets well, of how? That's it. Like that's, you know, that market alone and say if we wanted to focus just on EOS could be a super huge service for everybody because these yeah. people that are donating their time are not experts. They're just passionate and donating their time. They're not necessarily marketing experts. They're not even necessarily fluid in the language or even talking in, in English, right? So it's it to be a huge service and we're coming up against a huge change in marketing. So who's going to reach out to everybody that has EOS anything in their name and change it to the new name when it comes, right? Because it's going to be rebranded to everything. How can you put these GDPR and all these best practices in a toolkit? We're like, let's, let's up the game here, guys. If we really want to be a serious you know, platform out there, this is how corporations do it because they have to follow rules. There is someone right. top down telling them this, we have to do this. This is the rule of the internet. Right. So, so yeah, that's a huge, you know, huge service that, you know, empowering teams to, to reiterate what you've already done. Uh, that would be a huge service. I, I think we have more different, you know, a person only has so much time. I don't know how much time I'd be able to do. Like there's so many things to do as I well, guess. I know, I know. 
but yeah. that's that that's at least spearheading something with best management to say here's the path guys because there are people that are not literate in this that are spending so much money on different services right just the service out of a box that isn't addressing any of these legalities right and right. isn't addressing being able to be seen worldwide so so yeah pretty pretty cool stuff yeah so uh in addition to that i'm all into what's called i18n now which is the internationalization localization framework for uh, the basically like full stack development in React, you know? Uh, and so I've been setting up on this. And the big thing now is I'm actually like in direct dialogue with Chinese Eden members. And there's this whole thing that's developing that is like, whoa, that was a big unexpected curveball of what uh, information. But in this dialogue, one of the things that came up was the EOS Community Forums website that Aaron Cox originally built. And it was built, I found out through Aaron under discourse. And at that time, there was not language translation capabilities. Well, now there is, but they're plugins. And it all depends on if you have a self-hosted version versus if you, you're doing the fee-based version or whatever. But the thing is, is that like, there's so many like things that like, I'm just running around going like, check, check, check. Like I could sit here and spend my whole life just going in this direction, but rather than investing myself in it, I'm making mental note. And that's what I'm going to build my EOS index site, you know, like of all right. these potential projects and, and start getting on boards, you know, finding some way to like, Hey, I want to yeah. gamify my WordPress website. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, it's not even a real game. It's just a culture that I try to create. And if you like it enough or whatever, maybe it's just based on Facebook comments or whatever kind of integrated type thing I build into it. But at some point it's sort of like a proof of concept, you right. know? Yeah. So that's where, so I don't know. I just want to just give you a bigger landscape of where my mind's at because I don't get to share that with everybody. Well, you know, I, uh, I got into uh, US early, but I'm not a developer. So I had to find people to host my nodes, to do all this stuff. So I'm more of the visionary entrepreneur. Um, but my last developer, unfortunately, had kind of a mental breakdown, so I'm not producing blocks on any chain. So I'm kind of actively looking for someone, and it's kind of a downturn in the economy. It's hard to, you know, fund something when there's not a lot of money coming in. But I'll manifest, you know, another so hold on. You developer. Were... But what I'm getting at is that I will definitely want to be hosting a fractal node, and in a lot of these chains, just having a node wasn't enough. It was someone to actually be front facing and marketing. So you'd be the perfect person to align with. If I'm going to be, if we're going to be putting up a node to, you know, for fractally or, you know, get back into EOS and, and stuff like that, I wouldn't ask you or want you to be in the trenches of keeping nodes up because it's a full-time job and it would sure. take away from your passions of everything else. I wouldn't do that to my best friend. Well, you I'd know, want the, someone that would want, like you could learn a, off the main guy. I, I listen, I'm really interested in learning about block production and getting into it myself. And I've already been yeah. teaching classes and learning classes on API nodes because yeah. of all this whole thing. So it's like, don't be feeling as though introducing me to that as something that I, I'm going to, you know, I mean, maybe it's more than I can bite off, but you know, I definitely have interest. See, I didn't realize. Okay. So you were actually producing blocks in the past. Yeah, up to this January, we, I was producing blocks from uh, the Go No Go launch. You know, in 2018, we never made it past like number 18 because we, I didn't do enough marketing, and other people had more money for marketing, uh, but had a Wax node, Telos node, and uh, and Proton node, and keeping it up the infrastructure to be in the top main ones was all about having history nodes and because we weren't getting paid too much it was just i just didn't have the capital to come up with the the servers and and the, the way to get us up on the ranks and then it was just a small team so we didn't have enough marketing expertise to be out there all the time and if you can see my profiles I do a lot, but I'm not the upfront social media guy all the sure, time, sure, right? Sure. So it's not my forte. I don't enjoy it that much. Um, so well, yeah, to have a well, a good team, it needs the back end guy, me leading it, and a good marketing person. And and it does cost money, so a person has to try and 
get up there enough for it to pay for itself. It's never been like a, a profit center, but I, I kind of did it because we just needed other representations for all these nodes. Uh, so I'd love to get back there, but we'd uh, I'd have to find someone that's done this before that's proficient that you could learn off and that would keep hey, back in. Listen, yeah. uh, as the guy's name is Michael of EOS USA. And, oh, you know uh, what? He runs his own nodes and he's awesome. And he dude, does he, he does he a runs, lot. I think he runs like every known node to mankind or something. I, I he's oh, I got sure. I got I sent you a link to the Telegram group that I created that he's been real helpful in because he's been answering my questions that everyone else can't or doesn't want to. And uh, I already have dialogue over him about my interest in, in, in getting, see, I used to work, I got into technology in 97 at a computer store in sales. Within one year's time, I was a production manager of the department that basically built the highest end customized PCs pretty much in the world. And I can say that, and I believe that to be a fact, because one of our primary customers was a company called Teradyne. Um, Teradyne produces test equipment for printed circuit boards. So anything that you get with the green printed circuit board computer electronic, they're the largest manufacturer in the world. Right. Uh, so the specifications of the hardware sophistication, I mean, this is initially when I started that company it was pre auto jumpering stuff, but we had bio specifications, revisions, just weird, really every, any kind of minutia of change had to go through a specification department. So, you know, I grew up with a VIC-20 that was recorded on a cassette recorder. I remember installing my first 20 megabyte hard drive. I remember yep. going from monochrome to three color by Hercules color graphics adapter. So I've been sort of like with the evolution of hardware, but then I fell out of it. Now I'm sort of like, I want to get back in this because my boss, I want to talk to him because I, I realized, did you know that Wax has, uh, or no, Telos? One of them, one of the other groups I was looking into their block production, they used managed servers by Hetz. Hetzner or Hetznol or something like that? Yeah, that's where I was, that's where we hosted all our, it was just the the best service, cheapest price. Um, yeah, but the problem is we all say, we all say that, you know, EOS different chains aren't decentralized because there's not enough nodes. The real truth, if you go in there and see where people are hosted, we're not hosted at, at varied enough different data centers. It's like not, 80% are Hexner. And um, you, what are the other ones? U, T. And C. Yeah. So, so no one's, only Michael is running his own infrastructure. And to run your own infrastructure, the last guy I talked to is like, you know what? You'd have to spend a lot more money because the amount of time it takes for me just to run your hosted stuff, I should be doing all this in the cloud. And they show me some prices of doing it on AWS and Google. I'm like, Fuck, I don't have the money to start even start that. Yeah. And it's all about it's about the history nodes, really. Um, and you know what? I, I have a vision that I think can be accomplished. It's not technologically impossible to where we can do a decentralized, a truly decentralized service to where we have classifications of home users that have like levels of, for example, this node needs to stay up. So in order to qualify for this, you have to have redundant power and redundant internet and this allocation of bandwidth. But if you're willing to host it at that location, we're going to have a managed remote service thing where it's like a franchise or, a, you know, like you deal with someone deal right. with the physical, you know, and so you can have geographic nodes locally to anywhere and just tons of them, you know, redundancy. After well, mirrors, that fits so. into that fits into some other service model like you were talking about before that there's a community, there's somebody else instead of just someone at their house, some other service that you right. know has redundancy power. And yeah, it's, it's a great model because if you look at all these blockchains, they, they talk about decentralization. No one goes into where all the shit's hosted and it's hosted in three or four big boys. There was, uh, I can't remember, UTV or something is one of the big ones or OTV uh, in Europe. It went down and one third of the EOS nodes went down, right? So yeah, we say we're decentralized. We're using third-party data centers. Right. Yeah. And we think we're protected because we're using one in Germany called Hexner. Yeah. No, no dude, no. It, it's, it's not the case. No. And, and here's the other thing, uh, Dwayne, I've already, I spent the last 25 years of my life being a recycling sustainable freak. I, if I had the free time would probably be going back to my wood construction. I love building things out of wood and recycled wood. Nice. But one of my biggest hobbies and my biggest passions is I want to take all the computers, electronics, waste stream and convert it to value added educational 
infrastructure for students to where I can train them on how to troubleshoot hardware, how to identify the hard things, get donations and things to where now we've got computers to gift to students that are financially distressed or that get a scholarship, they jump through the hoops, you know, they get a free computer with, you know, everything installed to start doing the dev work or start doing WordPress or start mm -hmm. doing, you know, whatever. And it's like this whole thing begins with the gamification of websites, you know, where you know, I, I, that's, that's really interesting because I was on the other end of conservation of just the collection of municipalities realizing they don't want the mercury or the chips or the whatever in the landfill. So just trying to give people a recycling option and then had to do the full life cycle after that. And the life cycle after that is fucking awful, right? So if those could be repurposed instead of just sending them over to fucking India and China to just get a little bit of the fucking yeah. precious right. metals well, out of there, to, to like the, the chips, the chips aren't being made. And you know, I don't know. I think, you it's know, very the monopoly on intensive. chips and stuff, if we could repurpose those, that would be a huge, yeah. huge service. So, so absolutely. So what I'm thinking is this, is that, uh, like I already have, like when my computer went out, the one, the rig I was streaming with, I got it for free. Okay. It was like over 10 years old. And the whole reason I'm running such a crappy rig is not that I can't afford a better one. I just want to build an empire off of recycled equipment, just to prove a point, you know? And so when that one went down, I went to my local computer dealer, who's awesome guy. And he, and he likes Linux too. And I bought this $150 unit, which works like three times better. And so now I want to start advertising to my local and Hey, if you want to like learn WordPress, I'm going to just teach everybody for free. I have affiliate sales programs and I just want the traffic more than anything. Cause I'm in a position where I can not have a source of income and pursue my free time and pursuits. And I've been doing that for like the last decade. Whereas like, I'm not afraid of investing sweat equity into something, you know, to, you know, to, to be able to have the freedom to do what I want to do. But anyways, uh, I think it's all very interesting topic because one of the things that Michael told me is when it came to recycling computers and computer parts, he said he's got a trailer. If I could pull a trailer, bring a trailer up there, he's got a trailer of parts he could just give to me. You know? Oh, wow. And, and so now think about this how this goes hand in hand with block production. How are we using our resources efficiently? Do you know how many NVMe drives and you know, uh, CUDA enables graphic cards you might end up burning through? Or they just have to be retired, not because it's failed, it's because you don't want to wait for them to fail. To have a downtime in a situation you will have to replace oh, and, and the right the right the, the ssd cards and my like high uh, data center whatever the acronym is to have the best fastest ssd you know stuff dude it, it fucking it, it's not kind to them at all that yeah. shit fails a lot dude so right. it's tough it's tough on uh, on hardware for sure but but what i'm saying is that like say you have a lot of systems with motherboards you know the hard drives are dead the video cards are dead, but the board's still fine. The chip's still fine, but we got to retire right. this equipment anyways. I'm telling you, I'm working with like 10 year old shit. You know what I'm saying? That stuff yeah, yeah. gets retired pretty quick. Now, yeah. I think the new blockchain based on Ami Heinz's input that he suspects that Larimer has some interest to change the design of how the chain transacts and not make it so resource hoggish and yes. intensive. And if through the Fractally in Orbit team, I'm giving the feedback of what I'm trying to implement with like what's going on to where this distributed kind of ledger actually truly being distributed and like everybody be a node producer, everyone. So we have the grades of, I don't know anything about it. Well, what you need to do is make sure the power stays on and the internet stays on and that you have a dedicated IP with this much bandwidth and this little latency. And as long as it stays that we got, we got you covered. You know what I'm saying? Well, you just know, like to prove a model. concept, if we wanted just to do something different and uh, for a BP on any of these and just say, look, we've decentralized our services not through top tier data centers that we're using a distributed model to independent places around the world with backups. It would gain, it would gain some eyes for sure, right? 